Hello everyone, welcome back to All Car News, and I've been driving this 2023 Kia Nero Hybrid in the SX Touring trim, so basically fully loaded for the past week, and I've been getting incredible fuel efficiency, and it's been getting some funky looks, because this thing just looks pretty cool, I think, in my opinion. Really cool shapes and design, very aerodynamic and stuff, and some little tricks Kia has done as well, and this is a really cool competitor to the more conventional Toyota Prius that we're all familiar with. I think it offers a little bit more space, a little bit more of a traditional hatchback SUV-style shape than the Prius, and... It's coming in around $36,000 fully loaded. But if you don't want a hybrid, the Kia Nero family is full of new products from a full EV to a plug-in hybrid. And of course, this hybrid right here. So I'm gonna show you guys what it's been like to live with this thing for the past week and why I think you should consider it if you are looking for a really fuel efficient daily commuter car. Now, before we take a quick tour of the exterior and interior of the Kia Nero hybrid, I have to show you the main feature of this car and that is its powertrain. Now under the hood here, we have a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine paired with a hybrid system. Now combine the systems making around 139 horsepower and a over 190 pound-feet of torque. So all that torque is coming from that oh, those electric motor systems built into the hybrid drivetrain, which is pretty cool. And I think it's pretty peppy off the line, though. You're definitely gonna be struggling for power in some scenarios, and it's definitely a fantastic kind of urban-style vehicle. Now, I have to say, under the hood, this is a very clean and well-tidy hood that I'm seeing in this new um, Kia product. I just reviewed um, a Ford Maverick hybrid, as well as a, the regular Ford Maverick, and it was a hot mess under the hood. So I very am applauding Hyundai Kia Group for making very clean and easy to work on um, engine bay, which is, actually looks really nice presenting it. You see this nice big hybrid logo over here. You can see the smart stream um, identification for the engine right there. And it is all front wheel drive only, so everything is packed up front. Okay, guys, so here we are with the all new Kia Nero. And the Nero was literally just redesigned around last year. The whole lineup, the whole family has gotten this really nice big new generation with again with the three main members of the family of this Nero hybrid the Nero plug-in hybrid and the full EV Nero and I really do love the new design of the Nero I like funky looking cars and this is a funky looking car but I don't think it's uglier in any way it's kind of quirky and has some really cool design elements that I think Kia has been developing really well over the past few years it's a very clean front feature there's not a lot of busyness going on and it's this little top bar over here there's no lights built into it though it is all of your lighting is built into this lower element down here. So you have your projectors, all LED, of course, this um, daytime running lamp right here, which is really cool, kind of, kind of dynamic shape. And down here, you do also have LED fog lights lower in this kind of black front fascia. Now there is cooling, of course, this is not um, a full EV. There is an engine under there. So we do have open vents over here for your radiator, of course, air conditioning. There's a little tiny little vent in this top strip up here, which is kind of cute looking. And of course we have the newer style Kia badge with that kind of brushed metal look finish on it. That looks kind of nice here. And this kind of nice uh, bright work accent going across the front end. Coming around to the sides, we do have the SX Touring package. And that means we get 18 inch alloy wheels, which actually look a lot bigger than they should. I think it's just because how this wheel well and the dimensions of this car work. They look really good actually. And we're running on continental um, rubber on this Nero. Pretty good tires, front wheel drive only, grip is okay. You know, it's not a dynamic type of vehicle at all, but it handles itself pretty well for what it is. I also really love kind of Kia's little notch design they've always been doing. And you can kind of see it in the hood right here. And it also continues up into the top of your windshield, which is kind of cool. A lot of the vehicles have had that little notch design. That's a really cool design trait that I've been seeing on all Kias. And I hope they keep continuing that. The side profile though, and the rear three quarter are my favorite shots of the Nero. As you can see, it is finished here in this really cool city shape green color with this kind of black um, contrasting elements going on here. Now this is actually an additional package to kind of get this um, big black C pillar. Very reminiscent of like older Golf Volkswagen Golf products, so that really prominent rear C pillar. But I think it works really well in the Nero, and I like how Kia kind of implemented the design of the rear end of it. So back here, you can see this black C pillar blends in with these kind of hockey stick or boomerang style taillights, and it's actually act oh, passive aero. So if you can see these little strakes right here, there actually is aerodynamic stuff going on here. So there's a pass through just right around there, and if I don't know if you can see on camera, but you can see kind of straight through it. So air is going to be flowing through the C-pillar and exiting right back here where the taillight is to kind of help airflow through and around the vehicle to improve efficiency, which is a really cool design. I really appreciate seeing that. It's almost like a little bit of a side buttress. So cool stuff going on on this Kia Nero. 
back here you can see those kind of boomerang style taillights right there look really cool um, especially when they're illuminated at night. And there also is a huge third brake light up here that spans the, almost the entire width of the Nero. So it's a really dynamic looking shape. Though Hyundai and Kia, a lot of people complain about this. They do still put their turn indicators in the lower end of the bumper. So down here is where you're gonna find your turn indicators and your reversing lights down there as well. You can see back here, we have our hybrid um, electric vehicle badge right here. This will change depending on which Nero model you have. They have a Nero badge and of course the new Kia badge as well. We do have a power tailgate as well on this Nero, which is pretty nice. I just think this is part of the SX Touring package. I don't believe all of them can get a power tailgate. And you actually have a lot of space back here, which is pretty nice. Um, and since it's not a Prius, you do have a little bit of a taller um, kind of load area. And you can, of course, fold these seats down to get even more space. And there is no spare, I believe, in this one. So you do have more storage under this little mat over here. I believe this is part of the speaker system. It sounds very hollow, so I don't think it's a battery, but I wish you could remove this because it's kind of taking up a little bit of space. Um, this has a Harman Kardon um, audio system in this one, which actually sounds pretty okay for the price. You do have a fix a flat kit in though, so if you do have a flat, you're gonna have to use that or call some roadside assistance. Um, nice mat over here. You have a little bit of some extra side storage, cubby areas, and even LED lighting in here, which is really nice. And of course, since this is a power tailgate, it is also power closing. Okay, guys, let's go check out the rear seats of the Nero first, because I think people will be spending a lot of time back there. They're hauling passengers around. So opening up the doors. Now, I do actually really like this kind of brushed uh, metal look accent on the uh, door handles themselves. They actually feel really more premium with that on it. Opening this up, and you can just see it is, unfortunately, though, a big sea of black plastic throughout the interior. There really aren't any like high-end materials. Even these seats, they're not leather. It's a synthet synthetic kind of material, um, though they feel okay. Definitely not the most premium thing on the market. I think the Prius actually wins there at those points. It is a very utilitarian vehicle. So let's hop inside. Pretty solid thunk from those um, doors as well. Good rigid enough chassis. Now, you know, this is not a flattering design. It's not meant to be. It's not a luxury car. It's not even a premium car. It is a commuter car and you're really getting just like a very utilitarian interior, I would say. I really like these seat backs actually. It was kind of like design here. It's almost as if it's designed if you want to like hang like a suit or a coat on this or something, it makes it really easy. I love the integration of the USB-C ports right on the back of the seats on both sides. So you have two charge ports there as well as two air vents, but that's about it with controls here. Um, no storage or anything in the um, lower area. Door panels, like I said, again, big bunch of plastic. You just have your window controls and your speaker, some storage for water bottles and cubby hole right there. This little center armrest does fold down so you have two cup holders, which is nice. Um, the seats themselves are actually pretty comfortable, pretty supportive. Um, they have a nice sculpture to it so it doesn't feel like your legs are just sitting up. And I actually have to say, this is my driving position. There's a lot of um, leg room back here, a lot of foot space as well. And I can actually a little stretch out a bit, which is pretty nice. You do have some storage on the backs of both seats as well. So that's really fantastic. And I have a really nice amount of headroom back here as well. So I'm around six feet tall and I have but even if I put my head back, I probably have like two inches of headroom um, left, which is pretty impressive. So I think a lot of people will be able to sit back here. It definitely may be a little bit tight to fit three people back here, but you can 100% put two adults back here very comfortably. And there is a lot of like glass back here. So you don't feel claustrophobic or cramped at all, which is really nice. Okay, guys, well, that's pretty much it with the back seats of the Kia Nero. Let's go hop in the front. So I think Kia is doing some really nice stuff up there as well right now. This one does have keyless access on there and the mirrors are um, power folding and closing, which is really nice, which I can demonstrate right now for you guys. Sometimes, there you go. I didn't even touch the door yet and it did that, which is kind of cool. And again, same treatment going on with the door panels up front as well. So nothing fancy. Even this is some kind of like plastic type material for your armrest. It's a little bit padded though. It's a little bit rough. I wish they kind of use a softer material there. Um, you have your Harman Kardon kind of speaker grills right there. All plastic materials in here, nothing fancy. Um, this one, piece does bother me though i think this is going to get really destroyed over time it's this glossy black plastic on the door panel this i wish they did a different choice of material there um seats themselves they're okay i wouldn't call them the most comfortable thing on the planet though what is comfortable is the heated and ventilation option so you can see they are perforated um that is one really nice feature for around thirty six thousand dollars. so not a lot of vehicles get um ventilated seats and they do get very cold you do have lumbar support but it's only two-way um i wish there was a four-way at least lumbar support on this and they are fully powered which is nice um we have aluminum pedals which is pretty cool let's hop inside Again, pretty nice solid thunk from those 
doors right there. And yeah, this is the interior, guys, of the Kia Nero up front. Really cool, funky design going on here. We have some ambient lighting built into the dash right there. This can change colors. You can change it manually as well as I think it can change with the two drive modes as well. Pretty cool. But again, you know, pretty cheap materials in here. Nothing too fancy. So I think the Prius, like I said, may have uh, some points over this Nero um, in terms of nicer materials. Down in the center console, you have your start stop button, which I can turn on for you guys. You can see a little bit of an animation. When it turns on, which is cool. You have your um, kind of curved display cluster system over here. So you have right here is your um, touchscreen. It's a little tiny. Um, I think it works perfectly fine. And it, the placement is definitely something you're gonna have to get used to in this car, as well as the seating position. I'm actually, this is my eye level right now. This is the lowest the seat goes, which is really weird. So you kind of feel like you're sitting in an SUV almost on top of it at all times. I wish you can get in a little bit deeper, but unfortunately this is the lowest the seat goes. Nonetheless, you may get used to it over time. If not, it may not be the vehicle for you. Now, Kia and Hyundai, or well, mostly Kia has been doing this kind of new panel thing for their um, climate control. So if you wanna access climate controls, you have to press this little fan and it'll bring up the full climate menu um, and it will disappear though sometimes it doesn't and i was trying to change the volume one time and <laughs> it was getting just i was just turning the heat on i didn't realize it and it was already like 90 degrees outside so sometimes it, it glitched on me just once um at least it is separate though from the infotainment system and i have to say this infotainment system is pretty pretty good nonetheless very quick to respond i don't have any issues or complaints with it really um, i have apple carplay so nothing really bad here and i love this little hybrid screen where you can kind of see um your average fuel economy, even the electric motor usage. And I love the energy flow screens. It's one of my favorite things on all these hybrid stuff. So you see what's happening and you can do a split view with navigation, which is pretty cool. Um, no heads up display or anything like that, um, but you do even have that little navigation built into this kind of home screen menu there. Now, I will say this, um, dash did take a little bit to get used to just because at first i thought it was a fully digital dash but it's not if you can look closely this is a little screen right here this is a little screen right here and this is an actual the only like, real multi-function display here the only thing that changes is when you switch into sport or eco mode and those little uh, um, outer rings change color that's about it what i do like though is that you can see your hybrid battery um charge level which is really cool i haven't seen that too much on of these hybrids as well as your fuel um this is a pretty small fuel tank as well but that's okay because it's pretty fuel efficient but you can see right here i see my average fuel economy i've been doing 45.6 miles to the gallon over the course of 410 miles that's pretty good though the recent trip i just did i did like 55 miles to the gallon which is insane um so pretty efficient when you drive in a calm and nice manner i do like this little um display to show your energy flow and you also have um, the full highway drive assist function on here it doesn't auto lane change but it does um steer which of course you have to keep your hand on the wheel and it's a fantastic a stop and go um and you can also use these paddles right here not only to change the um six speed of the dual clutch gearbox but also to control um your regen braking so that's really cool especially for just a regular hybrid and not like an ev or a plug-in hybrid so you can hold this left paddle down and and that'll kind of put it in a max regen mode um, to kind of slow you down instead of braking. You can also adjust through three different levels and that'll display up there when you are driving along. So that's pretty cool. I like that feature as well. Steering wheel, this is a pretty much their new Kia steering wheel we've been seeing on all their new products. It's okay. I, I don't like actually these controls to control the infotainment system. So like to go um, forward in the track, you have to go down, but to increase the volume, you have to go up. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's still a little bit strange to me though i do like um these controls for your um highway driving assistant very simple and easy to use um their speeds go up in increments of five and you, i love the easy access to turn on and off the lane um keep assist as well as your following distance control that's great to have on the steering wheel down here pretty basic stuff i do like that you still have a traditional shifter um this has a six-speed dual clutch gearbox not my favorite transmission on the planet but that is the only option you can get for the hybrid and down here you also have your um ventilated seat controls as well as your heated seat controls um your heated steering wheel and as well as you also have auto brake hold and a few other little buttons here so you have a parking camera so it's really just the rear camera it's okay you have a camera nothing too crazy but i don't really know why you have a button for that i guess there could be a 360 option and maybe in the ev or the plug-in hybrid 
You also turn on and off your parking sensors. I do like that there's no blank buttons though. I think that's why they kind of filled them in. Down here you have a USB port, and this is the only way you can use Apple CarPlay, which is really annoying. They still don't have wireless Apple CarPlay, which to me makes this wireless charger completely useless because I want to use CarPlay and there's no point in doing all that. So yeah, it's a little annoying there. Um, regular 12 volt socket there and a USB-C port if you do want to charge your phone a little bit quicker. Over here we have a pretty decently sized glove box. It's nothing too big. Feels pretty nice as well. And yeah, I do love these controls that Kia and Hyundai have been doing on their um, turn indicator. So when you kind of like change your lighting controls, it'll come up in this display. And also if you're changing like your um, windshield wiper controls, it'll come up in the display as well. I really like that. So sometimes you don't know what you're doing. You can kind of see it right there. So that's kind of cool. It does have auto wipers and automatic headlights as well. So a lot of nice premium features in this SX Touring. Um, so a few other buttons here as well. So again, pretty nice interior almost forgot the memory seats. You have a little bit of a tiny little um, sunroof right here as well that does open. And again, LED lighting in this interior, so it does feel a little bit more premium. It's a very rough headliner though, and you know, some cheaper materials in here. But again, this is a commuter vehicle, not like a luxury vehicle. So you have to remember that if you are gonna be looking at one of these. Though you're buying this for the um, very efficient fuel economy. It has a rating on the EPA saying $900 average of f refueling for a year. I don't know how much that would be true with these higher fuel prices, but I could totally see it if you're driving this um, very cautiously and just to and from work all the time. Nonetheless, let's go take this thing for a drive because that is where some really interesting stuff happens. And I have some interesting complaints and likes of this powertrain. Now, this thing does not have a lot of power. It's 139 horsepower, I think over 190 pound-feet of torque. That's mostly thanks to the electric motor providing all that low-end instant torque. 18 inch wheels. Continental tire. Oh boy. You know, you're not going to be winning any races in this thing, but that's not the point of it. It is a commuter vehicle, and I think, as that, as especially in an urban environment, I would not particularly want this in kind of like a more, um, if you have a really long commute. But if you're just like commuting back and forth from work in like a very urban environment, a lot of traffic, a lot of stopping and going, this thing is fantastic, especially with this highway driving assist, which I'll get to in a little bit. Now, this powertrain, let's talk about this for a second. It's a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder paired with like, I think a few electric motors actually all combined up there, um, all front wheel drive only. And I think the chassis is pretty uh, solid for what it is. It's one of the more refined chassis I've felt from Kia. I really not, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the chassis in the Telluride, for example. I felt I think it felt a little bit cheap. The EV platform on the EGMP with the EV6 is pretty good, but this is one of the more mainstream vehicles, and it pre feels pretty solid. I actually the steering feels um, a little bit more refined than what I felt in previous Kias as well. Again, nothing sporty in any way or form. There's no <laughs> enjoyment or driver engagement, no really feel in the steering. But nonetheless, it's fine for what it is, and it doesn't feel um, like cheap anymore. Though the Prius, for example, the new one, completely destroys this thing in any kind of like driving dynamics. So if you want that and really favor that, I would just go for the Prius. But this one, it's pretty cool, especially with the amount of storage you get in the back and the um, kind of space you can fit people in back there. I think it's a cool blend um, for like a kind of daily hybrid commuter vehicle. And it is very fuel efficient as well. And that's a big thanks to this powertrain. So I've been averaging around 45.3 miles to the gallon over 411 miles. I've been driving this. I just did a road trip. Uh, well, I guess it's a little bit of a long drive, 30 plus miles. And I got around 55 miles to the gallon over that trip, which is insane. Um, and I really love that Kia allows you to see the hybrid battery charge level as well as your fuel gauge right there. That's kind of cool. And you also can play around with these little center screens and a few different stuff in there. You can see your um, kind of powertrain distribution of where all the energy is flowing throughout. I think that's really cool. And let me just demonstrate these paddles. So we're in the eco mode right now. You have eco and sport mode. Um, but we're gonna focus on eco mode real quick. And essentially what eco mode is doing for you is that you can use these paddle shifters to adjust regenerative braking, which is really cool um, for just a regular hybrid. So I can go left and you see level one there, put level two, level three, and you're gonna feel that force from that regen braking as there's more of that act, uh, regenerative action coming from those electric motors up front. So that's kind of cool. Though what I really love is that if you hold down this left 
left paddle, and let's say if you time it right, I can come to a full stop without touching the brake. So if I hold it, you'll see it goes max auto, and I can come to a full stop, and it actually will completely stop the vehicle and put the brakes on in almost like an auto hold function, which you do have right there, um, which is really fun. I've been kind of playing it around, getting the timing right, and having some fun with it. So it, that's one way you kind of, kind of feel engaged with this vehicle. Um, otherwise, it's pretty numb. I mean, if that's fine, just a daily commuter car, I think that's okay. Um, generally else in here, it's pretty quiet on the highway. You can definitely tell though, once you get up to like 70, um, 65 miles an hour or typical highway speeds, it is gonna get a little bit loud. You do hear some wind noise, some tire noise, and some road noise, but generally pretty quiet and composed. And like I said, it's more of an urban style vehicle. Pop it into sport mode real quick. The steering weights up in a very artificial manner, just a little bit. The throttle is a little bit more sensitive. And the engine's gonna stay on more to get you more power. And when it is on, it's not the best sounding thing on the planet. And you really do gotta wind it out to kind of get up to speed. But once you're at speed, um, you kind of just stick around there. It's nothing too bad. I never really have been in sport mode at all while driving this. I've actually quite enjoyed using it just in eco mode. I think it's been perfectly fine. Um, though, don't really rely on eco mode if you really do need that like, kind of more acceleration in the instant. I, and also, I don't actually like the steering in sport mode. It feels almost like a bumper car <laughs> style steering wheel, just in the feel of it. It feels very video gamey, but that's why I just usually leave it in eco mode and it kind of feels a little bit more normal to drive. Though now that we are on the highway, I can show you Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis is absolutely fantastic driver assistance system. This one has called their HDA or Highway Driving Assist. It doesn't have automatic lane changing, but it pretty much has everything else. So all I have to do is press this button and we're on, that's it. Um, now you're supposed to keep your hands on the wheel, though I have noticed that Hyundai and Kia systems just go on for a really long time before they start warning you to put your hands on the wheel. I think that's kind of a little bit dangerous. Um, those more advanced systems are, really should have a kind of a sensor up there to track your eyes, but that one does not have this. Um, and you, do, you are able to kind of turn on and off that lane keeping assist function with the button right here. So it can just use regular cruise control or have this full kind of highway driving assist. And it will come to a complete stop if you're in traffic and um, continue off going if traffic keeps moving. So that's fantastic. So you really don't have to keep your foot on the brake as and the gas as much if you're on like uh, in a stop and go traffic situation. Now, one thing I do want to point out, though, is that I have noticed some lurchiness, specifically with this six-speed dual clutch. You have to remember, a dual clutch doesn't really operate as a normal automatic gearbox. The gearbox does, um, so you may experience some of that like lurchiness coming off the line sometimes, especially when you're in the sport mode and the engine's always on, and you're not having that kind of electric motor to assist you. Um, I, I don't really like that, and I know some customers don't like that because they actually got rid of this gearbox on the new Kia Seltos. Um, they changed it to a torque converter, I believe, eight-speed automatic gearbox, because people were complaining <laughs> about the old dual clutch. So I'm not sure why they chose to do this. I guess they kind of went with this over a continuously variable transmission just because there's a lot of stigma against those. And they're like, oh yeah, wow, fancy dual clutch on a hybrid, pretty cool. But you know, it, normally it's a very smooth powertrain, though like I said, if you're operating it in sport mode or the engine's kind of kicking in more to kind of charge the battery, you may notice a little bit of that lurchiness. And you will, if you're on it, you will feel those gear changes kind of happen and there's a little bit of some motion um, related to that. Nonetheless, it's not the biggest issue whatsoever, but it is something that I have noticed while driving this thing. But yeah guys, this is the 2023 Kia Nero. And like I said, wonderful commuter car. Um, and if you aren't a fan of the Prius and you do want something a little bit more spacious, a little bit more SUV looking, this is a fantastic replacement, especially if you've had like a old Prius V or a Prius C or something, I would definitely look at one of these. And of course, like there is a plug-in hybrid option as well as a full EV option as well. A little taste of that engine. You know, it's not loud and raspy, but it doesn't have the best sound either. Anyways, guys, thank you for joining me on this full tour review of this Kia Nero. And of course, as always, stay tuned for a lot more coming soon from all car news. Cheers.